Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend. Today we're gonna to talk about why stress is killing your sex drive and how it's killing your gains in the gym. So I'm willing to bet most people understand intuitively that there's a connection between your stress levels and your libido and your stress levels and your gains in the gym, your ability to recover, your ability to gain muscle, your ability to do well during the next workout. But at the same time, I'm willing to bet that most people, if you ask them what the connection actually is between stress and your sex hormones, very few people could actually tell you. And that's important. We want to understand the reason why stress, and in this case, we'll be talking in particular about the hormone cortisol, has such a negative impact on your sex hormones. Because if we understand the reason why this is happening, we can do a better job of fixing it. It isn't always just as easy as saying, oh, go relax, go do some meditation, uh, take a day off. Sometimes those things help and sometimes people will go on a vacation and feel reinvigorated and back to them back to their old selves. But a lot of times people have worn themselves down after years and years and years, whether it's job or kids or you know getting married or a first house or a second house or whatever it is that's going on in your life. Um, you know, people have worn themselves down to the point where just relaxing or just dieting or just exercising or just taking that B12 supplement or that fish oil supplement isn't getting the job done anymore. Uh, one of my favorite practitioners out there, Dr. Dan Kalish, has a saying that I love, which is, you can't go into a cave and meditate and cure stage three adrenal fatigue. And he's absolutely right. At a certain point when you've stressed your body out, to the point where it no longer has the ability to recover, meditation by itself isn't going to be enough. It might help in that direction, but it's not going to be enough. So with that all in mind, let's talk about how stress can negatively impact both your libido and your gains in the gym. So how does stress affect your sex hormones? Well, let's first understand uh, the relationship between something called cortisol, which is your master stress hormone, and it's also your master catabolic hormone, uh, meaning that it breaks down body tissues, and DHEA, which is your master anabolic hormone. It's the hormone that helps build body tissues up, and DHEA is also the mother of uh, testosterone and the different types of estrogen. When your body is chronically under stress, it will use the substance that makes both DHEA and cortisol, so DHEA is over here, cortisol is over here, there's another substance called pregnenolone that makes both of these things. When your body is chronically under stress, your body will take all the pregnenolone it has and it will shunt it over to preferentially make cortisol. This makes a lot of intuitive sense, right? Your body doesn't care about reproduction when it's really stressed and it's trying to survive. It doesn't care about your digestive health. It doesn't care about your gains in the gym and getting that next PR on a workout. It cares about one thing, survival. Now you might say, well, the stress that I experience on a day-to-day -day basis isn't a threat to my survival, and that's true, but your body doesn't recognize that. And if you, you know, chronically have a crappy commute to work and a boss that you hate and a job that you hate, and you know, you're just busy all the time and you've been chronically stressed out for years and you just don't feel your best, what's happening at that point, like we've talked about in previous videos, is your cortisol is completely out of whack. Sometimes it can be really high, sometimes after that point it can be really low. In either scenario, your body is taking away pregnenolone to try to make more cortisol, and as a result, not enough DHEA is getting made. And if not enough DHEA is getting made, not enough testosterone and estrogen is getting made. And that can lead to all sorts of sex hormone deficiencies. So. The reason why this is happening is because under stress, your body will preferentially use this master steroid hormone called pregnenolone to make cortisol, your master stress hormone, instead of DHEA, which uh, preferentially produces, uh, or which is the main thing that produces your sex hormone. So if you don't fix that issue, you're not going to be able to um, fix uh, any sex hormone deficiencies that might be the case. So let's talk about some of the symptoms of sex hormone deficiency. So, you know, with testosterone, uh, this one, a lot of people know, low libido, uh, just feeling fatigued all the time, uh, irritable, um, you know, depressed mood, uh, not being able to make gains in the gym, 
uh, just, just not being able to kind of get on with your life the way you want to, not being able to uh, kick ass at life as we've, we've talked about in another video. Um, it may not be clinically low to the point where you need you know, some sort of massive prescription uh, hormone to correct it, but it's just not at the point where you feel your best. What about estrogen and progesterone? So there are three main estrogens in the, in, in the body, uh, three main types. Uh, there's estrone, which is the main type of estrogen uh, that is produced uh, when someone is in menopause. It's also a precursor to estradiol. Estradiol is the main one that's active in uh, premenopausal females and estriol, which is the main estrogen produced in, um, during pregnancy. So all different types of estrogens. Estradiol is the main one we're gonna be concerned with uh, for today. Uh, but in either case, if cortisol is out of whack, that's going to lower DHEA production, which is then in turn gonna lower estrogen production. So what can be symptoms of low estrogen? Things like hot flashes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, uh, foggy thinking, memory lapses, um, irritability, a, a bunch of different things. And uh, a lot of people experience something like this where they go to their doctor and you know, the doctor just says, well, it's not severe enough for me to do anything or eat less, work out more, or, take an antidepressant. Uh, you'd be surprised how many uh, people have been uh, told to do that based on something like an estrogen defici deficiency, which can be easily corrected, but it's just not severe enough for uh, Western medicine to typically intervene with drugs and surgery. On the other side of things, you could have, uh, this is far less common, but you could have an estrogen uh, excess, which is where you have mood swings, tender breasts, uh, irritability, nervousness, water retention, things like that. Um, but the more common scenario for most people these days, especially when people are struggling with uh, libido issues or fertility issues or energy issues, is that these things are out of whack. Now, the mechanism for testosterone and estrogen being low is typically lowered DHEA production. It can be other things, uh, many other things, but the main one that we're, we're concerned with is lowered DHEA production. Progesterone is actually in a different uh, pathway, but that can be low too. And a lot of the symptoms that you would have with low estrogen, like the ones I just mentioned, the hot, fat, hot flashes and night sweats, can be mimicked with a progesterone deficiency. Another thing to keep in mind is that, especially in women, a lot of what matters is the progesterone to estrogen ratio. If those are uh, if those two uh, numbers, progesterone and estrogen, aren't in the right ratio with one another, then that can also mimic symptoms of low estrogen or low progesterone. Um, so you want to keep that in mind as well. So the reason why these things get out of whack typically is because cortisol itself is out of whack, either too low or too high. And as a result, DHEA is uh, too low and then these sex hormones are too low. So. What's the problem with the standard approach to fixing uh, sex hormone deficiencies? The problem is that hormone replacement, which is typically what goes on when someone has low estrogen or low progesterone or low testosterone, it's just symptom control. It's just masking the symptoms. And there's always a reason why the testosterone is low. Testosterone in a normal, healthy adult male or female is not just low. It isn't. It's only low when there's something going on. And just giving hormone replacement masks what's really going on. So um, you're not really going to get to the root cause of the issue, which can lead to all sorts of other issues if you don't address the root cause, if you just do the symptom control route. Now, it may be necessary in certain acute cases to do symptom control for a period of time. But realistically, long term, this isn't good. This isn't uh, gonna help you out. High dose prescription uh, hormone replacement can lead to all sorts of issues. Um, you know, Forget the fact that it doesn't address the root cause, it can lead to all sorts of hormone imbalances. Um, the doses that people get are mega doses, like these gigantic doses of progesterone and testosterone and estrogen that you know, are super physiological doses. Um, so you get this, you know, gigantic dose, which leads to symptoms in and of itself, and you're not addressing the root cause. So, um, and third, um, there's always, always, always a reason why these things are off. If anyone just says, oh, my testosterone is just genetically numb. Pretty good chance that's not true. Pretty good chance that's not true. 
usually this stuff is 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 uh, very heavily influenced by the environment and what you're eating and what your stress levels are like. So um, there is no such thing as a normal symptom. No such thing. If your testosterone's low and you're experiencing symptoms from that, that's not normal. If your estrogen's low and you're experiencing symptoms from that, that's not normal. Uh, and that's just all by way of saying that there's something that can be done to fix it. There's a root cause that you want to get to to fix it. Okay, so how can I tell if there's an issue? So obviously, if you're experiencing symptoms, that can give you a general idea that something is going wrong, but it's not enough by itself to tell you what's actually going wrong. So um, typically, you know, a symptom or a set of symptoms only just points in the direction. It doesn't actually tell you what is, um, what's actually going on. So in order to really find out what's going on, doing something like a BioHealth 401H saliva panel or uh, a Dutch panel, which is a, which is a urine panel, uh, gives you a much better sense of what your hormones are actually looking like. And both of these, you can do either sex hormones or adrenal hormones, or ideally both, because they have a very close interrelationship with one another. So um, the BioHealth is a very good test to run. Uh, it's just saliva-based. It's not terribly expensive. Uh, the Dutch panel is a much, much better test uh, to run. It's uh, got a little bit more complicated information in it, but it gives you a much better sense of what actually what's actually going on with the hormones. We can run both of these tests here uh, through our Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Program. Uh, and we do it just at the cost of, you know, what the lab uh, charges to run the test. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can certainly pursue that with us here. Um, but typically, if you go to your doctor and you ask, hey, can you run a blood test on this? Typically, again, what's going to be the issue is that the normal range for these sex hormones is going to be so wide as, you know, as to be to the point where your doctor's just going to say, oh, it's normal but you're not feeling well. So it might just be the case that um, you fall within this very large pass-fail range, but it's not ideal or optimal for you. So you wanna make sure that um, you get something that can actually test your free hormones, the metabolites of your free hormones, and you can actually see how, you know, this has very good correlation with how you're actually feeling. It's not um, a blood test that um, doesn't always pick up uh, the free hormones, it doesn't always pick up the metabolites, and it doesn't always have a good correlation with how you're feeling. Okay, so what can I do to fix the issue? Well, it really depends on what your issue is. Is it too much testosterone, too little? Too much estrogen, too little? Uh, you know, what's the interplay? What's the ratio between these things? How are your adrenal hormones doing? So there are a lot of different things to going on, but the standard headline with all these things is that you wanna address the root cause, which is typically too little DHEA, with a dress for health success protocol, which is the um, standard protocol that we do here with functional diagnostic nutrition, where we focus on diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. So hopefully after this video, you have a good sense of why uh, stress is actually impacting both your libido and your gains in the gym. It's because cortisol will be preferentially produced by your body instead of DHEA, which will lead to lower sex hormone production, which leads to libido and fewer gains in uh, the gym in terms of muscle building and PRs and all that stuff. So hopefully uh, you guys have a better sense of how these things go now. And if you're interested in pursuing further investigation, you can always contact us here at CrossFit South Bend and we can uh, talk to you about our functional diagnostic nutrition program. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.